Hello guys, welcome to another video with Cass on the Mizuma channel. So I'm guessing you have already figured out what this video is about. <laughs> Alright, so I made a one by one pixel panel. Uh, it, it's really cool, really compact, very elegant design with many, many very much desirable properties. Uh, let me do a, a quick demonstration in here. So I can remove uh, the dot in the eye for, from the word pixel. And uh, if you look in here, it is indeed very compact. And at the back, all we have is a giant wall uh, of observers. So yeah, I can remove this guy from here. And then there it is. <laughs> no more eye, uh, no more dot in the eye. I can do a little shapes in here. So let's try to do maybe something simple like this let's restore the eye for the ocd people not to freak out let's take a look at this on the other side and uh, yeah the symbol is in here uh and in case you don't know what the big deal is uh with uh one by one pixel panels in case you're not very familiar with some aspects uh, of redstone on java edition is that ideally we want to power pistons to do this but there is this behavior where if you power a piston the piston below it will be powered as well and uh, the pain, in some cases it gets even worse on a tileable design like this if something that powers it from the top you can power even more than two pistons at the same time so here is an 8x8 version of the panel and here is the redstone guys secret revealed and here's the uh, observer wall so yeah, you can use a design like this for your mini games, or if you're if you're trying to do a computer in Minecraft. Uh, I think I can do a, a little demonstration in here. So let's try to do something like this, for instance. And yeah, here's the shape we just did. And uh, yeah, very very simple design indeed. And uh, another really cool thing is that. Uh, these lines in here can be updated really fast so uh, if you update this line you can update all of those at the same time to be honest and uh, the design will not break um, you can also destroy everything real quick and as you can see everything is in place and um, you can also uh, update all of those lines at the same time so if you have information to send to the display and if you find the way of sending uh, the alternating patterns all at the same time, the display will not break or anything. It will be consistent. And then you can do on, on, uh, on a few ticks after, you can update the other power lines like this and it will be awesome. <laughs> um, uh, the problem with updating uh, lines that are close together vertically, meaning uh, updating things like this if, it, in, it, if you want to do a shape like this you, you need to be a little bit slower because the way the display works is as a kind of uh, uh, collection of twisted pairs of wires so what happens to one piston influences the piston immediately below it and vice versa uh, so uh, if you update something really quick let me try to do this in here you'll see the shape that we have now so uh, it can get inconsistent but the really amazing thing about it is that it will never break. So even if you, if, uh, if you try to mask things, you know, by updating things uh, real quick and uh, by accident, uh, uh, even, even by accident, it won't mess up. Uh, the only way it could possibly mess up is if you, if you do something that eventually gets uh, these pistons like this. Because this is the, this is how the setup is supposed to work. I have uh, I alternate between uh, single pistons and uh, double piston extenders. So if your setup ever gets in this way, uh, it will fix itself, guys. <laughs> so yeah, let me try to activate this line. And as you can see, the piston setup is already fixed. Uh, and if I try to activate it once again, as you can see, we have the, the pixels that we just selected, and the setup has fixed itself. I also built a lamp version as a reference, so the way it works is by uh, alternating between redstone blocks and redstone clocks. Because those blocks are fast, they will keep the lamp powered and the lamp will not blink or anything. I don't think it causes lamp uh, uh, light updates. So let's uh, take a look at an example. Let's do this line and this and this. Uh, and uh, yeah, here's our shape. Perfect. 
but yeah, it's it's not really a good design because it uses clocks uh, to keep the the lamps powered. Uh, it is it's still still like 50% more efficient than a lot of others uh, other designs that I've, that I've seen. Uh, but yeah, you don't you don't even need a, a smart setup like this uh, because the the pistons are not uh, in the same position, so they were they're never going to get budded. So you can do this with a much uh, simpler setup. I think this is one of the simplest designs for an infinitely expandable uh, one by one pixel display, uh, and also it has the property of uh, well letting you do local changes. So basically, you can. You have the ability to editing only one pixel in this thing if you really want it because what i've seen so far with one by one pixels is that people usually use a method uh, where they update the lines one by one and the entire image has to be rendered in this case um, which doesn't ac necessarily accommodate for simpler applications so for instance uh, people would send if they want to update this guy they send a two-tick pulse to this so the this, these guys reset and then you send a one tick pulse here and then uh, this guy will do something it will either set this or if, if it doesn't get the, the 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 one tick pulse this pixel will be changed like this and then you move on to the next line and do the same thing so we'll reset it and you always use the piston above to control the piston below because then this piston is not going to be influenced so yeah it's it's an interesting but a little bit complicated Thing that people do and yeah you don't have to do uh, this kind of complicated thing with this panel hopefully all right so uh, I think it's a good time for those of you who want to know how this thing actually works all right so here is one of the tileable units or one of the twisted pairs as I'm calling it and uh, it's really interesting the way it works and also funny in my opinion so uh, the the first thing is let's let's see how this works so I'm going to power this and this will act as a toggle. So uh, the first thing I would ask you to do is to watch just the top piston so you can see how it toggles. So I guess I can let you guys see and press F1 here. Okay, so it toggles as expected. So now please uh, pay attention to the bottom piston and see what happens. See? <laughs> I think it's really funny. So yeah, the way make it works is when this guy is about to get powered, I I removed this guy from here. Whoops, not me. <laughs> and then once the pulse is gone, I place it back in there. So this is how I take care of this situation. Uh, but now there is a new problem because uh, this is a double extender. Uh, but because it's a tileable pattern, there is no way for me to power this guy without using the top in here. So let's see what happens to the bottom now. So position myself here. Yep. All right, so the bottom has to use the top, which means that by changing this guy, I'm going to change this other guy. So what I do is I send a double pulse because a, a double pulse will, well, I messed it up because <laughs> a double pulse will retract this guy, but then place it back in there. And if it's already retracted, it will place it back there and then retract it again. So basically the double pulse toggles a T flip flop twice, which doesn't change anything. Okay, so this guy is safe. And then I do the same trick. I still retract this guy, so it won't catch the first pulse. But it's timed perfectly so that the piston is back there when the second pulse arrives. So it gets only one of the two pulses. Okay, so here is a piece of very valuable information that not every red stoner knows about. So uh, in this setup, I'm going to give this guy one tick pulse. Uh, and then this, uh, this observer is going to read the piston arm. And what happens is it will transmit uh, it as a one tick pulse. So reading the piston arm will just transmit the one tick pulse. But if instead of reading the piston arm, I decide to read the piston body, this is what happens. Notice that the block, instead of toggling, it pulses uh, and it's, it, yeah, it gets rid of the block, but then it pulls the block again. And uh, of course it works on the opposite way. It doesn't create a two tick pulse, which is amazing. All right, so this is the behavior uh, that, I, that I try to do here. This is what I'm doing in here. I give it a one tick pulse and then this guy reads from the piston arm, which is why it toggles. And this guy at the bottom reads from the piston body. So yeah, it goes back and forth. And the second trick is 
Uh, when I power the bottom, I use a two tick pulse instead. So let me show you the difference. So uh, now if you give it a two tick pulse here and you read from the, from the piston body, it gives a, uh, a double pulse. So that's the same behavior as before. The change is here. When I read from the piston arm now with a two-tick pulse, it also gives a uh, double pulse. So this is the trick to everything in here. So when I power the bottom, I give a double pulse to both pistons. And then there's the timing thing, which is why I have uh, this triple line here, which is supposed to add delay so that this guy can remove this piston from the way. And uh, it also uh, has enough delay for the double extender to operate. So yeah, really quick, uh, really small, smart design that I came up with. This is a very innovative design that I think a lot of people will have fun playing with. Hopefully. <laughs> so yeah, all your feedback is always appreciated. Thank you very much for watching. See you.